Hi guys, welcome to my channel. And uh, this video is more about uh, like how I transition my career from manual testing to automation testing, and uh, like the challenges I have faced and the overall my seven years of uh, experience in testing. So in this video, what I'll be covering is that right from starting when I was a manual tester, and uh, <clears throat> so what all mistakes I have made and how could you avoid them and <clears throat> the challenges I have faced in like learning automation testing and how much time it took me to learn automation and the transition between manual to automation testing and beyond that. So this video is uh, going to be helpful for, for all of those who are like um, thinking or like planning to switch from manual to automation and uh, I, I think this is the high time guys that uh, you, sh uh, you should uh, switch because uh, like uh, there is a saying very famous saying that like uh, manual testing is not dead but manual testers are so like uh, what I have seen is that uh, companies nowadays are like taking interviews in automation and the like the guys are doing manual work only and there is nothing like uh, wrong in that because like testing is testing so <clears throat> sorry guys my throat is <clears throat> really bad today so let's begin so and i would suggest you to switch to 1.5x speed so that uh, i have seen my previous video and uh, i found that uh, it's better if you switch to 1.5 it will save your time also now Again, I'll be I will be uh, giving you timestamps like how much time would it ideally take for you to complete that uh, task. So, like if you are like a fresher or zero to two years of experience and currently doing manual testing, so I would suggest you to like uh, go through the basics of manual testing and try to know that why we are doing manual testing and the purpose. And uh, like try to go through each and every aspect of testing and uh, know the basics, know the basics rights. By basics, uh, I mean the kind of testing, the types, I mean it's the same thing, but uh, like uh, different kinds of testing and uh, bugs, the bug life cycle and uh, SDLC, software development life cycle software testing life cycle so these kind of things and you should not just cram those but understand those like what what is software testing life cycle right from the stage one to stage six there is in like each and every the product owner the business development team your scrum master what is the like use of each and every team and what is your role in that so try to cover those basic things and uh, i'm sure these things are available easily on the net and like if you are in this bracket so it will easily take you two to four weeks to complete those complete these topics only after that i'll suggest you to jump to next step okay so after like uh, two to four weeks you can jump to this step now baby steps in automation testing I mean to like for automation testing you have to uh, build your base and for that I would suggest you like what I have done is that uh, I took uh, the basic uh, Java training and by Java training I mean like uh, you have to understand what are loops methods methods and classes oops concept are very 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 important because like when we are developing our framework in the later stages so these concepts are used there also so i mean i have studied like i am from cs background and i have studied it in my engineering but uh, like at that time i actually didn't understand it and uh, like just for the sake of passing exams i i read it but i would suggest you to like take each and every like uh, the four pillars of uh, oops and 
cover cover those so <clears throat> sorry sorry really guys for that like my bad is really my throat is really bad today so like polymorphism inheritance encapsulation abstraction like anyone ask you what is abstraction you should like explain it in 2 minutes so like the basics of java you understand what i'm saying is that uh, the basic data types what is jdk what is jre you should like uh, you should be in a position to tell and uh, like your itself only you should be able to understand what these uh, basic things are and uh, again like with this i would suggest you to go through strings because like we are moving towards automation testing and each and everything there is a string like uh, the parsing and uh, like validating so like we are going to encounter strings arrays very much so i would suggest you to learn those the basics the operations basic operations on these two after that like um, in two weeks like you can take two week here and again like in one week you can cover the basics of uh, like this is this is the basic of selenium the xpath locators like different locators why selenium why not uft or any other tool like uh, we are, currently we are working on selenium 4 and uh, what was selenium 3 about the basic stuff yeah like uh, you can spend one day on reading why we left out the remote server remote web driver and uh, rc what i mean to say so like uh, with this and you have to be like uh, learn every day so consistency is the key again this is a very important part because like uh, when i was uh, when i was uh, like uh, below 2 years experience at that time what i used to do is that i'll make a sprint on one day like on saturday sunday i'll sit down and i'll read everything like oops oops also strings also everything and uh, like for 3 weeks i'll be away so i don't think this is going to help you and uh, if you are currently working uh, on automation in your uh, current project that's good but like uh, if you are purely into manual testing i would suggest you to divide your divide your plan in such a way that like you take step by step to build your knowledge okay so in one week i think one week is uh, sufficient to where is my mouse yeah one week is sufficient to cover this and uh, again this is very important point like focus on understanding and not on cramming what i used to do is that like if i study data types so i will like draw a diagram and i'll try to cram things okay like this is integer this is boolean and all that please like cramming is also like necessary because cram things but try to understand also that i mean to say and practice because if you don't practice you don't understand like what is happening behind the scene so practice after that when you are like comfortable on java basic strings and uh, basic selenium so after that try to automate like uh, amazon just take take in page and uh, login after that like very basic basic stuff okay and uh, you don't need to like worry and uh, nowadays there is so much help available online so and what i am planning like i am also planning for a uh, basic framework like uh, selenium framework so in that like i'll try to cover uh, like right from right from zero so after that like uh, spending like 3 weeks here and uh, you can move on to next step and uh, on automation testing i would suggest you to like advance automation take this parallelly so like your java concepts are very much necessary and uh, in advanced automation try to like work on tables the 
check boxes radio buttons different kind of weights why what is the difference between uh, thread dot sleep and implicit weight explicit weight and uh, i'm sure like uh, if you are like uh, thoroughly reading and understanding these things it will take you time to grasp those thing and uh, it will easily take you like four week to like uh, get on hold on these things and uh, like you don't have to give up and uh, regularly practice and uh, i'm sure anyone can learn selenium plus like try to learn action class and like windows handling the different tabs how like what is the return type and uh, all that stuff so like if you are uh, if you have reached till here i am sure you are in a position to make a framework and uh, so again again i'll uh, explain it to you like what mistakes i have made like uh, i understood how to find the xpaths how to play with the windows and uh, that is not enough um, right now for like uh, less than 5 years of experience to like crack interviews because the technology is changing and uh, with that you have uh, you have to uh, like uh, look in the infrastructure part also so by infrastructure i mean you ha- you should uh, have a working knowledge of git so after this this is applicable for all those guys who are like 3 plus uh, years of experience and uh, to like 7 so for 7 this is a bare minimum and uh, for 3 years uh, experience guy like it's good to have like if he can uh, make or build framework from scratch and if he has knowledge of uh, like git and the pipelines and all that so again like uh, you guys uh, have heard of like the page object model the hybrid uh, kind of uh, hybrid uh, framework and all that so try to learn like uh, the different kind of structures like what kind of frameworks are available why we are choosing page object model and all those questions and i'm sure like when you will be working so yeah like you should have that mindset that okay if i'm doing something why i'm doing it so all those kind of stuff i'm sure you will ace the interviews and again like this is not for interviews but for your general knowledge and if you have knowledge i'm sure you're going to crack any interview okay so again like uh, try to build a framework from scratch and uh, jot down all the points which you have uh, learned before and uh, try to implement all those all those things and after that like uh, if you have like push your code to the git okay so like in organizations things don't happen like that like there is a proper pipelines the code merge and all that like uh, if if you don't know git you should spend at least like one week on learning git because uh, nowadays it's mandatory and it doesn't matter like uh, whether you are a qa or dev like for qas also nowadays it's kind of mandatory to learn uh, git and any what do you uh, call it uh, like the where do you put code and all that so uh again like uh, when you have made the pipeline you should know what is ci cd how to achieve it why we make pipelines and all those questions and after that like you will like nowadays we are not uh, using like uh, distributed uh, servers so we make like we take a dockers and uh, we try to like run our scripts uh, on docker so that like uh, we bear, like we save on the infrastructure co- cost and uh, again the same is applicable for the aws so like try to find why we use docker because uh, like if we have made a code and uh, it's running on your machine and your client is saying that okay it's not running on mine so you can like ship your whole project to 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 them and they can easily run through one or two commands so that's like the beauty of docker so like this is at the later stages and uh, 
after that uh, you should know the basics of like aws or google cloud or azure devops and like any cloud technology because soon all the legacy products uh, are going to be switched over to cloud and uh, at that time like if you are done through all this and you, if you have reached like till till this stage if you can make the pipelines the jenkins pipelines and so it's a high time for you to like uh, learn dockers and aws and again like uh, the bonus x factor for me it is consistency because if you learn daily na there is no one which can stop you and uh, like you can achieve anything so on that note i suggest you happy learning and what like comment down below on what topics you would like to me uh, you would uh, like me to cover in upcoming videos and uh, just put down your suggestions if you have and thanks for watching guys